like crazy? This guy right now is crazy, right? And beam. So the second video that I ever did was covering goop and its goopiness. And lately I've been thinking, what has goop been up to in 2020 since that video? Is goop still really bad? Has goop made an effort to listen to criticism or is it still selling outrageously overpriced products and using pseudoscience? Well, that's just what we're finding out in today's video. Today we're doing a deep dive into goop and whether whether or not they're still horrible. But first, hi, Madison here, back with another video exposing scammers. And if you like deep dives and like to analyze, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell and give this video a like if you like it. And welp, let's get into the video. So first, let's talk about some of the more popular stuff that has come out about Goop since the first video that I did, like almost a year ago at this point. Goop came out with a docu-series on Netflix. Netflix airing a pseudoscientific docu-series? Who would have thought? So surprising, we never would have expected it. This docu-series had some interesting adventures with mushrooms. Am I crazy? This guy right now is crazy, right? I feel like you did, I did this as a kid, right? Like you just lie on your back and watch this guy. I'm moving through some emotions. Really cold water. <laughs> yeah. No, no, out. Oh, yeah. Long press. Once I got in, I just like felt like I was drowning, honestly. It was just like, it's so jarring and shocking. And psychic mediums. So, everybody get ready and beam. And there were definitely a lot of really interesting parts in this documentary. To give this docuseries some credit, I did like how they included skeptics into the mix. The docuseries wasn't just all people who were like, yeah, this totally works and is amazing, but it had some people that were like, this didn't work for me, or were like, I just don't think that this actually works at all. The most interesting skeptic scenario, in my opinion, is when I believe an assistant was part of the medium episode. I don't really believe in mediums or psychics. A psychic medium was helping everyone explore themselves in kind of almost a therapeutic way. And since the psychic noticed how much of a skeptic this one assistant is, she takes her to the side and tries to do like a one-on-one -on -one psychic reading with her. First thing I want to say is that are there, are there twins in the family or like a Gemini like birthday? What's that June? No. I have a female figure coming in and I feel like it's your grandmother's sister. Like that's how I want to say it. My grandmother didn't have a sister. It's one of those things when you're proving something that seems like outlandish and crazy, you have to be like spot on. And the whole time this assistant is like, no, this is not working for me. I was hoping that she'd be able to like say things that were totally me or totally my situation. So then I could be like, oh, okay, this is crazy. This is real. This is whatever it is. But I didn't feel that way at all. And all of a sudden, one of the people on the production team of the docuseries starts crying and comes out and says, no, you're actually talking about my grandpa. I think you're actually reading Lindsay right now. <laughs> that can happen. This I, is the problem with it. That's what, yeah, that's what I figured. So those first people who came in were yours, right? Yeah, my grandma's mm -hmm. <laughs> Coincidentally, in the middle of when this psychic is interviewing a skeptic, and the skeptic the whole time is just sitting here like, what is going on? I think the most shocking thing about this docuseries is how much hope Gwyneth and her close co-workers have in a lot of these healing systems. Like, I wish I had that much privilege in life to where I could just put all of my eggs in the goop basket. And as I've said before, while I think having an open mind and an open approach to medicine is super important, I do also think that the alternative health industry is a huge industry. One in which Goop itself has made millions and millions and millions off of people taking their holistic approach in place of modern medicine, putting money into Goop's pocket as opposed to the traditional medical care system. I also think this idea that like mushrooms will be able to heal all of your trauma can be really dangerous too. A, because people have very different reactions and B, because therapy is also a good option sometimes. And in true Netflix fashion, Gwyneth Paltrow's The Goop Lab was renewed for a second season at Netflix. Are we really that surprised? The Goop Lab will return for another round of six 30-minute episodes focused on 
guests, intimacy, and female empowerment. Production has yet to commence on season two, and a release date has not yet been set. Goop also came out with a This Smells Like My Pachina candle for $75. And the whole thing ended up getting a ton of publicity. And in my opinion, it was very clear that the candle was intended to be a large publicity stunt, which actually worked so well. People who made fun of Goop bought the candle. People who liked Goop bought the candle. Everyone was making videos on how the candle smelled, writing blog posts about it. We got the Goop candle, finally. (laughs) Now I had predicted that this candle didn't exist because I said, it sold out immediately, it's $75, I feel like it's just a marketing ploy, but I'm wrong. Here's the candle. People actually bought it and it actually was sold out. I think that Gwyneth Paltrow really took the image that Goop had of being, you know, very woo-woo, very weird and out there. And she capitalized off of that image, which is genius in itself, but it kind of concerns me how well it worked. It kind of concerns me how willing people are to buy a $75 candle to see whether or not it smells like someone's private parts. (laughs) Society. (laughs) Goop also has their summits, aka the In Goop Health Summits, which are a thousand dollars. Writers have called the Goop Summit surreal and intoxicatingly selfish. Before 2020, the in-person health summits had a very cult-like vibe to them. Like for a ticket starting at one thousand dollars, you can take a fitness class, get gently stretched by a master Pilates instructor, you can eat a delicate pile of leaves and you can get an injection of vitamin B12. If you took a cult-like seminar mixed with Fire Festival and its prestige and high expense, but not quite the same disaster level, and combined that with the aura of just over-the-top, needless expensiveness, needless high-end prices, that's what the Goop Summit is. And we cleanse and cut away any obstacles on your path. Is it weird to be doing this practice with this, like, native, like, ritual that you have? Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. In a place that's $1,000 to get into is a lot of white blonde ladies like me. I'm constantly serving my, like, indigenous community, the Latino community, you know, the queer community, so I feel like I'm always attempting to make my services as accessible and as universal and, you know, community-based as possible. But, of course, this year, the In Goop Health Summit was at home, very similar to Poosh's summit of sorts that I talked about in my push video. The Goop in Health sessions are also really entertaining with some prime moments. Like if you want to hear two famous white women talk about how much they love wine. How are you? (laughs) I would love to start with the wine. God, we love wine. What's in it? (laughs) How can we like drink more of it? It never occurred to me that wine could be made from anything other than just a beautiful grape that was you know, uh, as it existed as its own perfection. And listen to the most thought-provoking conversations. <sighs> okay. Do you think that your body is truth? Do you think that your spirit is truth? Do you think that your soul is truth? Do you think that your mind is truth? Just start to think about that. Now. You're such a manifester, but you also, I think, you convey so well that anybody can be a manifester in their life, right? The Goop in health sessions are definitely the place for you, except for it can be any place because it's via the internet. You can watch this amazing content anywhere. I always think doing summits like this online will sound like a nice idea. Just don't translate as well when you're actually looking at something through a screen because reality is there are thousands and thousands of meditation videos online for free that you can watch. There are thousands of interviews from experts that talk about all of these sort of spiritual concepts. So even without the goopiness factor, just the reasoning for paying for something like this makes no sense to me. And in my opinion, much of what made the goop summits so goopy is the fact that you're doing all of these alternative medicine practices in person. Should you still pay $1,000 to do all of those alternative health practices in person? In my opinion, no, probably not. Probably not. 
So the at-home summit launched on Saturday, September 12th and seemed to be available until October 2nd with an all-content pass for $50, a discounted pass for $5, and US content and kit pass for $200. (laughs) So beyond those Goop events, which a lot of people have been talking about, what else has Goop been up to? What are they selling? What are they doing on their site? Let's check it out. So when you go onto the Goop website, one of the funniest things to me is the Goop in the news, where apparently they talk about moments in time where they have been in the news and they include little snippets that they think speak of them highly or are great publicity. So let's see what others have to say about Goop. From the New York Times, criticism of Goop is founded, at least in part, upon deeply ingrained reserves of fear, loathing, and ignorance about things we cannot see, touch, authenticate, prove, own, or qualify. No, I think it's just because Goop is recommending people to do stuff that doctors have said is not good to do and continues to sell things that are just make no sense whatsoever for an insane price amount where they are clearly trying to exploit people who want to explore alternative medicine practices. That's, maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. Maybe it's just from fear, loathing, and ignorance about things we cannot see, touch, authenticate, prove, own, or qualify. Coming from a skeptic at heart, I feel like it is really healthy if you do not see scientific evidence, data, or extensive proof that something works. I think it is healthy to have some reserves or hesitancy to use that product, especially when those products cost an insane amount of money, but maybe that's just me. Another one from the New York Times, there was no part of the self that Goop didn't aim to serve. Okay. From the LA Times, Goop also has a legion of worldwide followers so dedicated one might compare the lifestyle brand to a cult or religion. This is a quote that Goop chose to put on their website. They want to be seen as cult-like or have a following that's similar to a religion. Why? Maybe because they want as many people as possible to purchase $75 candles, but still pretty sketchy. Little alarming, just me, little alarming. The one thing that I think is actually kind of cool on their website, the one thing that I think is kind of cool, and I want to say this is a new development, it's at least new since my last video that I did on Goop, but I'm not sure, is the Goop PhD portion of the Goop website, which is so hidden. If you go onto their website and you click on the categories and then you click on the wellness category, it's at the very bottom of the wellness category. And there's a lot of categories in that whole wellness section. And detox is second to the top, which we know can be actually a really toxic buzzword in itself because our body has natural ways of detoxing. We usually don't need to detox. And when someone mentions detoxing, it usually means starving yourself or feeding yourself only liquids. But anyways, so Goop PhD is at the very bottom. And this is to me the only cool part of the site because Goop PhD is a hub for thoroughly researched health information. And this section of their site is basically where their science and research team puts together information of some of the most common diseases and health conditions where you can kind of explore through, look at the symptoms. Do I think we need more people self-diagnosing via the internet? No, but do I think this is a step in the right direction towards actually showing research-based, evidence-based information? Absolutely, yes. It's at least better than a jade egg. I think we can all agree to that. When reading through Goop PhD, they also have an emphasis on talking with your medical professional, seeking advice from a doctor. And I think that's really cool that they add that in there. And I wish, really, really wish they would add that in more throughout their site. Goop PhD also doesn't push a product. So I just thought that was really cool. And I'm like, please, can you do more of this or highlight it more? But then 
goop gets much worse because like I said, I saw detox on the little wellness category and I was like, let me check that out. Let me see what goop has to say about detoxing. So this is goop's latest product. It's called Prolon and it's a five day fasting mimicking meal program. And this five day program is the most brilliant workaround that Goop knows of, of fasting without 100% fasting. The meal kit is designed to mimic the effects of fasting while providing you with some essential ma- micro and macronutrients. You'll get a package of five boxes, one for each day that contain all the food you need, plant-based soups, almond butter bars, kale crackers, olives, herbal teas, and supplements, and on some days, the beloved Choco Crisp Bar. What is this? Can you imagine living just on that for five days? I would be like, and it's supposed to mimic fasting. So you're marketing this to people who want to fast, who want to not eat at all. And instead you're like, hey, this will mimic the effects of fasting, but you'll also be able to eat soup, almond butter bars, kale, and kale crackers. It's only $250 to do so. And lastly, let's look at some of the Goop products, mainly through Goop's holiday gift guide that they've come out with this year, with some incredible products that we all need in our home, absolute necessities. So let's look into Goop's holiday gift guide. Goop has the amazing infrared sauna blanket V3 for $500, which... Imagine being able to afford that and just hop into bed and go into a sauna blanket. I mean, can't be me. I don't know why, but this sauna blanket has been haunting me. I just keep imagining purchasing this and then my bed catching on fire. Is that just me? They're also selling the gold sculpting bar for $195, which is a 24 karat gold plated vibrating tea bar for lifting and sculpting the face. They are also, for whatever reason, selling the Chanel Red Lambskin Pocket Camera Bag for $3,550. This site is very clearly not for me. (laughs) Not for me at all. Goop also came out with another candle instead of the Lady Parts candle. It's This Smells Like My Prenup candle for $75. This smells like my prenup? What does a prenup smell like? Please tell me. Actually, let me let me see what they have to say about what this prenup smells like. Because once again, can't relate. They market these candles as the candles that broke the internet. So they very clearly wanted this to be like a huge publicity stunt. They wanted everyone to be like, oh my gosh, to these titles. So they're made to be like that. But this smells like my prenup candle. Smells like a gorgeous blend of invigorating grapefruit and sexy citrusy bergamot with supple notes of ripened raspberry subtly interlaced throughout. This sophisticated and and hilariously named scent is the one to burn. And we mean burn when you're in some type of mood. This candle puts me in some type of mood for sure. I mean, we love a good publicity stunt, but I just think it's a little too much. And they also have roll-on versions, so if you always want to smell like something related to Gwyneth Paltrow, you can, if you're that goopy. Moving on to more of the holiday 2020 guide, they also have the Cotton Napper Weighted Blanket for $249, the Zip Ox Crystal Gel Kit, which is a nanocurrent device plus clean conductive gel aimed at stimulating collagen for instant sculpting and glow boosting for $480. A facial at your dermatologist office or esthetician does not cost that much. Why? For a crystal gel kit for $480? There's a sock box for $60? It's already depressing AF to receive socks as a holiday gift. 
But to know that the person that bought you those socks spent $60 to buy you a sock collection box, that is really sad. There's also a gemstone heat therapy mat for $1,049, a Bulgari Spiga ring with diamonds for $6,000, can't relate, small inside out ruby hoops for $4,000, and for $900, you can buy an LED sign that's supposedly handwritten by GP that says, you are my everything. It's like, meanwhile, other celebrities, I guess, if you will, will just like, you know, send out some autographs and handwritten autographs to some fans, maybe charge for it, maybe don't, just as a gift to people they appreciate. And then Gwyneth Paltrow's over here like, buy my handwriting for $900. <laughs> I can see now why they want a cult following. They're also selling a Ouija board for $1,995. Okay. And last but not least, we have the pyramid commode for $35,000 on the Goop website, which will go perfectly in your um, bedroom, I think. I have no idea where this is meant to be, but it definitely screams pyramid scheme to me. And of course, to go perfectly with your pyramid, you have the battered bread lamp for, you know, all of your bread lamp needs. If you've been searching for a bread lamp, here it is. Why? Why is any of this necessary? To me, like, the more I study goop, the more I'm just sadly impressed with how they are able to get people to spend money on this stuff. Who are these rich and privileged people who will buy into anything, who are buying all of these items off of the Goop website? How did they find them? They are so blatantly selling the most ridiculous stuff and people still buy it. So there you have it on what Goop has been up to lately. It's been a lot. There's there's a lot going on. It's still still running, still doing the same goopy stuff, still up to its same goopiness. And are we surprised? We're really not, but here's an update if you guys wanted it. I don't know if anyone asked for it, but there you are. And thank you guys for watching. Shout out to my Patreon members up here on the screen. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And my merch is down below as well. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.